This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning, I'm Rebecca Smith. And I'm Bill Bryant, and we have a lot going on. Let's go straight to CBS News for the latest from Dallas, where five police officers have been killed. CBS's Scott Pelly now. At least two snipers opened fire last night during a demonstration protesting this week's police killings of black men in Louisiana and Minnesota. Dallas police say 11 officers and one civilian were shot. A suspect who said he wanted to hurt and kill more law enforcement officials killed himself overnight after trading gunfire with police. And just minutes ago in Poland, President Obama called the attack vicious, calculated, and despicable. Our focus is on the victims and their families. They are heartbroken. The entire city of Dallas is grieving. Police across America, which is a tight-knit family, feels this loss to their core. And we're grieving with them. I'd ask all Americans... The president speaking just a short time ago. Manuel Bohorkas uh, lives in Dallas. Manuel, you've been there since shortly after the uh, gunfire broke out. Give us a sense of what, what, what is happening now, what police are doing. Well, that final suspect, the shooter, before he shot and killed himself, made a claim to police that there were bombs throughout the city. So what's happening right now is bomb-sniffing dogs are being used to try to make sure that is not the case. So there are still several areas here in downtown Dallas that are cordoned off with heavy police presence. Now, that gunfire erupted earlier with no warning. Just as that protest was wrapping up, there were 800 people. It had been peaceful up to that point, and then all of a sudden, it was chaos. It was something that can only be described as a war zone in the streets of downtown Dallas with people who had protested and marched not far from City Hall having to run for their lives and police officers lying dead in the streets and others injured. There is also video that has emerged of one of the shooters uh, taking a rifle and shooting at what appears to be unseen targets. Now, police officers at that point, uh, they hid behind police cruisers, whatever they could find to protect themselves and also to try to get their injured colleagues out of harm's way. Earlier, we heard from the mayor of Dallas, Mike Rawlings. To say that our police officers put their life on the line every day is no hyperbole, ladies and gentlemen. It's a reality. We as a city, we as a country, must come together, lock arms, and heal the wounds that we all feel from time to time. Words matter. Leadership matters at this time. I'm proud of our chief. Police were not the only ones who were hit by the gunfire that erupted. We're told also one bystander was injured. We heard from the sister of a woman who says that woman was here with her children at the march and was injured. Her and her boys were down at the rally. Said it was a very peaceful rally. They were enjoying it. And the rally was just ending. And as the rally was ending and they turned to leave, they were one of the first crowds to leave. They begin to hear, they heard the first gun shot and didn't think much of it. It was just like, what was that? And after that first gun shot, she heard the second gun shot. And after that, it was just um, a lot of gun shots. She said they just came so fast and they wouldn't stop. They all begin to run, scatter. And she said as she started to run, she caught a bullet in the back of her right leg. She immediately jumped on top of one of her boys, the 15-year-old. She jumped on top to cover him on the ground as she pushed him in between two cars and the curb. Her other three boys scattered and ran in opposite directions, so she lost three of her boys, didn't know where they were. She laid there. She said it was about five minutes before cops even got to her and pulled her from the area where she was because the, the shots were coming so fast not even realizing she was really shot at the time. He was shielding her son shielding her for son. five minutes? For five minutes before anybody got to her and was able to pull her away. What from did she area. tell you about that moment where she was covering her child and the shots were being fired? All she could think about was her other three boys. Where are they at? 
Jeff, one thing that is clear in speaking with protesters is that the shooters waited until the protest was over when the protesters would be dispersing and they would have a clearer shot of police officers who were directing traffic. Manny, very quickly, can you just give us a sense of what streets are still closed down and where they're still looking for any potential explosives? You've got a core area of downtown Dallas. Roth Avenue is one perimeter record on the other for people who know this area. Uh, this is a now smaller area than what was being closed down before, but this is the area that is still cordoned off at this point. Manuel Bajorquez in Dallas. Manuel, thank you very much. We're going to have much more on this story at 7 o'clock on CBS this morning. Scott Pelley will lead our coverage from Dallas today. We will talk to witnesses and leaders who are coordinating the response. Our coverage will continue throughout the day as well on our 24-hour streaming network, CBSN. This has been a CBS News special report. I'm Jeff Glor in New York. All right, again, to, to recap the situation. Five, five officers were killed. Six others were injured in the shooting. Here you can see police officers saluting outside of one of the hospitals there. A line of police motorcycles also escorted vans from the hospital. We'll continue to bring you coverage of this shooting throughout the morning. A very sad day for this country. WKYT News, of course, gathering local reaction. Police in Kentucky are reacting to the news out of Dallas this morning. Overnight, Kentucky State Police tweeted this. Our thoughts and prayers are with the Dallas Police Department. And Lexington Police say they will remain vigilant. They also said they feel like they have a great relationship with the community and they are committed to serving and protecting. Again, more on this as it comes in this morning and on CBS This Morning coming up at the top of the hour. We are also tracking a breaking story this morning out of central Kentucky. The story is fast moving. A large police presence in Georgetown where state police confirm they have found a car matching the description of a vehicle of the missing northern Kentucky couple that they were last seen in. WKT's Caitlin Sentner is at the scene near Connector Road in Paris Pike trying to figure out exactly what is going on. We do have that new information. We told you that they found a car matching the description of the vehicle. Good morning, Rebecca. And Bill had it right when he said it's a fast-paced story. The scene actually just cleared within the last few moments. The last police car just pulled out of here seconds ago. They just towed, I'm sorry, that car they said matched the description of the missing couple from northern Kentucky. Now, we got an update from state police about a half an hour ago. KSP and Georgetown police were on scene. They got here around 1 o'clock this morning. Georgetown police got a tip of car matching that of the missing northern Kentucky couple. Robert Jones and Crystal Warner was just off this Georgetown exit. KSP says it does appear to match the couple's vehicle description. We're told the couple was not in the car and that canines also searched the 40-acre field that was behind the car. Now, many people have been driving by asking what's going on, and they've told me that car has been sitting in that spot for the last couple of days. We went in and talked to the clerk at the Shell gas station behind the scene here. He told me police came in and showed him a picture of that missing couple. He told them he hadn't seen them. Live in Georgetown, Caitlin Setner, WKYT. Caitlin, thank you. Obviously, more to go on that story as we gather new details. And in Kentucky, much of the state has been dealing on and off with storms throughout the week. Today could be the same story. Here we go again. Yeah. Micah Harris tracking this on this first alerts of your weather day. Yeah, this is the third consecutive day, like you guys were talking about. It's on and off today. Not everybody will actually see these storms all day long, but a lot of us will. Watch this, okay? This is an area that I've been watching since I got in early this morning. And this area continues to develop with those showers and even a few rooms of thunder about to get going here in just about an hour or two. Now, I would say right around that 10, 11 a.m. time frame is when the bulk of the storms move on in. Before that, you'll still have some storms firing away, but the bulk of the storms, 10, 11 a.m. at the earliest, and then they move on through as we head throughout early into the afternoon. That's your severe weather threat. We're going to go over that. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about with an hour by hour forecast coming up. And the weather's already caused a lot of problems in our state. The cleanup continues for folks in Wayne County this morning. Storms damaged several homes and businesses yesterday. Strong winds blew off a wall there and part of a business in Monticello, while another business lost much of its roof. The winds also uprooted trees and scattered pieces of metal. Wood went flying all over the road there. Many people were without power for several hours. Luckily, nobody was hurt in all of that. Emergency management officials believe straight-line winds are the cause of the damage there.
Kentucky Governor Matt Bevin has declared a statewide emergency because of flash flooding in western Kentucky. The state of emergency opens up resources for public safety and assistance to help counties with flood damage. This video shows several flooded roads in Webster County. High water also shut down several spots of U.S. 60 in Critton County. Union, Hopkins, and Marshall counties also reported problems because of flash flooding. Remember, we can help you track storms even when you happen to be away from the television with the WKYT Weather Plus Traffic app. You can download it for free with the app or Google Play stores. Another tough story to tell you about this morning. Lexington police are trying to figure out what has led to a deadly crash this morning. This happened shortly after 1 o'clock in the morning on Harrodsburg Road. Just inside the circle, the driver lost control and hit a tree. WKWT's Mike Byer is live with more on what police think happened. We now know the name of that man who was killed in this morning's deadly crash on Harrodsburg Road. The Fayette County Coroner tells us 24 year old Dalton Womack was the person killed. Now, police say now the deadly accident happened just before 1 this morning. Police say that's when Womack was heading outbound on in the 2000 block of Harrodsburg Road near Springdale when he went off the road and hit a tree. We're told Womack was the only person in the car and no other cars were involved in the accident. Police say the 24 year old was unresponsive when they arrived. On scene, we're told he died at the hospital shortly after 1 a.m. Now, at this time, police don't know what caused Womack to lose control. They say there was no sign of alcohol at the scene. Live in Lexington, Mike Byer, WKYT. Mike, thank you very much. Governor Matt Bevin says a conflict of interest should bar Attorney General Andy Bashir from suing him. Bashir filed a lawsuit last week against Bevin's decision to abolish and replace the Board of Trustees at the University of Louisville. Last year, former Attorney General Jack Conway issued an advisory opinion that said it was legal for a governor to reorganize a university board. Bevin says the state's code of professional conduct for attorneys prohibits Bashir from suing the governor for following that advice. We're looking at showers and thunderstorms out there early this morning. Thunderstorms not really getting going just yet, but those showers will really push on through as we head throughout the next hour or two. And then once that passes, then we'll start to see uh, some of those rumbles of thunder spark up. Here's the look across the area, across 64 and also the BG Parkway. That's the area as you're looking back toward the west. That's the area of greatest concern along with Mountain Parkway, this area right through here. And that's what we're going to be holding on to with some of these showers and thunderstorms. I've outlined this area. So heads up, look, look and see if you live in this zone because that's where these storms will start to spark up here in just about two to three hours. And then once they get going, they'll drop down tremendous amounts of rain and also a lot of lightning. You can see that there's 9 a.m. But remember, it's anywhere from 7 a.m. to about 9 a.m. is when you start to see those storms spark up. That's not so much your severe weather threat. Not right there. It's a heavy rain, and could you have a stray storm that's severe? Yeah, it's possible, but that's not your main severe weather threat. Watch this, 10, 11, noontime. That's when the storms really push on in, and you'll see that coming in from the west and northwest. Lexington, I would say anywhere from 10 a.m. at the very earliest to about 1 p.m. at the very latest. So in between there, roughly noon, give or take, is when it looks like these storms roll through the bluegrass region. Down south, there's 1 p.m., go off into 2, 3 p.m., and you're still seeing it in the southeastern zones. But look what's happening. We are clearing some things on out back toward the west. There's some good news. The evening actually looks much better. You got the concert series kicking off there in Frankfurt later on this evening, and it looks pretty good for you guys as of right now. I'm not seeing much in the way. Up thunderstorms. It's already passed through during that time. So it's on and off today, guys. Best chance of severe weather will be 11, 11 a.m. to about 5 p.m. And then Saturday and Sunday look much, much better. Still, slight chance of rain. Can't rule it out on both Saturday and Sunday. For the most part, we'll be dry and lower humidity, too. That helps out. <laughs> we're going to be ready for that, right? That's right. All right. We're going to stay on top of weather for you throughout the day. And a lot more news coming up on WKYT this morning. It is right now 614. Well, the State Department will reopen its investigation into how Hillary Clinton handled her emails. We'll tell you exactly why after the break. 
Welcome back in. It's 6:15 this morning. Five Dallas police officers are dead. Six others injured after snipers opened fire on law enforcement right in the heart of Dallas. One civilian was also hurt. The shootings took place during a protest over fatal police shootings of black men in Louisiana and Minnesota. Three people are in custody. A fourth suspect is changed gunfire with authorities in a downtown parking garage. FBI Director James Comey faced tense questions on Capitol Hill over the FBI probe into Hillary Clinton's private email server. Republicans questioned Comey yesterday over why he described Clinton's email use as extremely careless, but then did not recommend charges. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul says Clinton is being held to a different standard. Still have trouble understanding what is the difference between extremely careless and grossly negligent. Earlier this week, Senator Paul's Democratic opponent in the Senate race, Lexington Mayor Jim Gray, aide, said Clinton made a mistake with how she handled emails, but also his campaign said it's focused on the priorities of Kentuckians. Following yesterday's hearing, the State Department announced that they are reopening an internal investigation into Clinton's email use. The State Department suspended its initial investigation back in April to avoid interfering with the FBI inquiry. But now that they plan not to pursue a criminal case, the State Department will reopen its investigation into whether Clinton mishandled classified information during her time as U.S. Secretary of State. Forecasters say a deadly typhoon moving across Taiwan is now beginning to weaken. Taiwan officials say the storm has killed two people and injured more than 60 others. More than 15,000 people were evacuated ahead of the storm, but not everyone could make it out in time. More than 300,000 homes are currently without power. The island's railroad service has been suspended. Nearly all flights to and from Taiwan are canceled until the storm passes. Bill Cosby will stand trial on criminal sexual assault charges. Yesterday, a Pennsylvania judge struck down the comedian's request to dismiss the case. Cosby stands accused of drugging and assaulting a former Temple University employee at his home back in 2004. The time this morning, 618 on WKYT, an Uber has struck a deal to operate in Philadelphia legally during the upcoming Democratic National Convention and through the summer. The move will help offset major regional rail disruption caused by the Transport Authority's decision in southeastern Pennsylvania to take a third of its rail fleet out of service due to structural defects. Another security breach to tell you about this morning. This time, hackers have targeted Wendy's restaurants and the customers there. The fast food chain says customers' card numbers may have been stolen at more than a thousand of its U.S. locations. None of those in central Kentucky of the Wendy's here are affected. That's according to the Wall Street Journal. It is still unknown, though, just how many customers have been affected. Patrons who used their debit or credit cards during February of this year are at risk. The company says it is working with federal law enforcement in the ongoing investigation. Rebecca? Yeah, I definitely partake in some Wendy's from time to time, so glad to hear it's not here. WKYT this morning is just getting started. Christmas in July? Coming up, find out why all these Santas are up in Missouri. Starting to see some showers continue to roll through the region. Now you'll start to see those showers develop into thunderstorms here in the next few hours. I'm going to get into that and I'll show you when your severe weather threat comes in. That's coming up next. Kentucky mornings start here. You're watching WKYT this morning. Welcome back. It is 622 this morning. We've been following a very tragic situation out of Dallas, Texas. It's we really, have, really sad. If you're just joining us this morning, uh, the details, the numbers are, are just horrifying. Right. Five Dallas police officers are dead. Six others are injured after what's being called a sniper attack opened fire during a Dallas protest. That's what's trending at this hour. One civilian was also hurt. The shootings took place during a protest over the fatal police shootings of black men in Louisiana and Minnesota. Three people are in custody in Dallas. A fourth suspect exchanged gunfire with authorities in a downtown parking garage. Now a quick check of weather as once again it's a WKYT first alert severe weather day. Yeah, I'm still showing you that outlined area that I continue to see these showers build. I continue to see the intensity grow, which means yeah, this is going to be valid exactly when I'm expecting these to spark up here in the next couple of hours in that region, anywhere from Louisville to Lexington, Lexington down toward 
the Mountain Parkway in that area. Uh, that's where we can expect some of these storms to continue to grow. By 8 a.m., I do expect some storms to be sparked up, but I would say 10, 11 to noon. So 10 to noon is when you start to see the bulk of these storms start to move in in the far north and northwestern zones. And then from noon to about 5 p.m., that's your best bet at severe storms. By 8 p.m., there's only a very small chance. You just can't rule it out. So things will calm down as we head off into the evening and night. That's when you want to get out, knock out a lot of these plans. I know a lot of uh, events kicking up. Masters of Musician Festival there in Somerset that kicks off today. Goes through your Saturday. Saturday looks much better, guys. We're going to be talking about a much better looking weekend. But first, we got to get through this stormy pattern once again for today. Okay, deal with it, right? Yeah. Well, a group of people on a Texas lake thought it would just be a normal day on the water, but instead, were first hand witnesses to a plane crashing just yards from where they were swimming. All right, take a look at this video showing that plane violently crashing into the water. The pilot said the engine failed shortly after takeoff. Once he realized that he was going down, he steered away from boats and swimmers before hitting the water at 60 miles per hour. Luckily, the pilot and his two passengers made it out safely without any injuries. But uh, amazing hmm. video there. Wow. And surveillance video at a Georgia gas station captured Mother Nature's force this week. The cameras were rolling when a storm brought down an awning over the station's gas pumps. You know, it's amazing video right here. You can see this is strong winds pushing rain and waves through the parking lot. Ooh. There it goes. In an instant, the awning just gave way. It appears the weight of the water just too much, causing that metal roof to cave. No cars were directly under that section that collapsed, but a red car parked in the next stall quickly bolted in that video after realizing what had happened. I'd probably do the same thing. <laughs> no one was injured. The gas station was left with quite a mess on its hands to clean up. Right, that's a repair bill. <laughs> well, this next story may make you double take. A town in Missouri is celebrating Christmas in July. And you're not seeing visions of sugar plums. Those really are a bunch of Santas there dressed all out in red. Dozens of chubby, jolly old elves gathered for the Kringle family reunion in Brown. Missouri. Each Santa took to their sleigh a gondola on a Ferris wheel. They were trying to break the record of the most Santas on a Ferris wheel. No word yet if the record was broken, but uh, you can be sure that the Christmas spirit was strong even in the middle of July. Mm -hmm. All right. Look at those Santas. You got it. <laughs> Wanted to bring you a couple of uh, stories this morning. Yeah. Just a little bit of a diversion from. Lighten uh, the mood a little yeah, bit. Yeah, from just a, a horrible uh, right. day uh, that is dawning with uh, the situation that has happened in Dallas where five police officers have been killed overnight. And we have all of our top stories, the latest on all of that ahead on WKYT this morning. When we return, Kentucky State Police and Georgetown Police actively looking into a scene on Paris Pike and Connector Road. Police recently confirmed for us that they have found a car matching the description of a missing couple out of northern Kentucky. We will have much more at 6.30. And before we go, tonight's Mega Millions jackpot, $540 million. Tomorrow's Powerball jackpot is $288 million. And we're glad you're here with us. More news coming up on WKYT. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning to you. Bill Bryan and Rebecca Smith here at WKYT News. We want to get straight to this story this morning on your Friday. Authorities in Texas have ended a lengthy standoff with a suspect possibly connected to last night's deadly police shootings in Dallas. Five officers were killed, another half dozen or so injured. Awful, yeah. awful yeah. scenario. Officials say at least two snipers opened fire on police at elevated positions. Last night, as peaceful protests, as they've been termed, over the recent police shootings of two black men just at that point plunged into chaos after this shooting happened. Brian Webb has the latest from CBS News. Dallas police say officers were ambushed Thursday night when snipers opened fire on police during a protest downtown. People ran for their lives. Officers used their patrol cars to take cover. We know that rifles were used to injure and kill Dallas officers and a dart officer. Eleven officers were shot, five died, including Brent Thompson, the first ever dart officer killed in the line of duty. Another dart officer, Misty McBride, was shot in the arm. Her young daughter spoke to reporters outside the hospital. I'm just glad that she that she's alive, really. One woman attending the demonstration was shot in the leg. She used her body to shield her son. 
Authorities took three people into custody in the hours after the shootings, including two individuals seen tossing camouflaged bags into the back of a black Mercedes. A standoff with another suspect in a parking garage ended early this morning. Police sources tell CBS station KTVT that the individual died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Officers had placed parts of the city on lockdown after the individual informed them bombs had been planted all over. Tensions were already high in Dallas and beyond following the fatal police shootings of two black men this week. Let's be clear, there is no possible justification for these kinds of attacks or any violence against law enforcement. The governor of Texas says now is the time to unite as Americans. Brian Webb for CBS News, New York. Well, authorities say the suspect involved in the standoff said there were bombs in places around the city. Officers sweeping the area. They expect parts of downtown Dallas to be closed all day long. President Obama addressed the country from Poland this morning. The president calls the attack vicious. President Obama also called the motivation behind the attack twisted. The FBI is already in touch with the Dallas police and anyone involved in these senseless murders will be held fully accountable. The president also said today is a, quote, wrenching reminder of the sacrifices police make for the public. A mother was shot during the chaos that followed the protest. The sister of Teresa Williams was shot in the right calf while running away from the protest with her four sons. In all of the chase, police in the chaos there, police put out a picture of a suspect. That person who had a gun at the protest was later released. KTVT in Dallas caught up with him afterwards. She immediately jumped on top of one of her boys, the 15-year-old. She jumped on top to cover him on the ground as she pushed him in between two cars on the curb. Her other three boys scattered and ran in opposite directions, so she lost three of her boys, didn't know where they were. William's sister says two of the boys are in a hotel and the family cannot get them out. The other two are now back with family. We received a phone call that my uh, face was on there as a suspect and immediately I flagged down a police officer. So while the country was looking for you, you were talking to police? I was talking to police, laughing and joking with police officers. Okay, Mark Hughes. Brother started receiving death threats even after he was released by police. Officials have identified transit officer Brent Thompson as one of the officers killed in the Dallas attack. Four more officers were killed, six others wounded after what officers describe as an ambush style attack. President Barack Obama said some of the injured officers are in serious condition this morning. Well, here you can see several police officers saluting outside one of the hospitals there in Dallas. A line of police motorcycles also escorted vans from the hospital. We'll continue to bring you coverage of this terrible tragedy out of Dallas throughout the morning. And police here in Kentucky are already reacting to the news out of Dallas. Overnight, Kentucky State Police tweeted this. Our thoughts and prayers are with the Dallas Police Department. And Lexington Police told us that they will remain vigilant. They also said they feel like they have a great relationship with the community here, and they are committed to serving and protecting. All right, a lot going on this morning. We're also continuing to track a breaking news story in central Kentucky. A large police presence in Georgetown where state police confirm they have found a car matching the description of the vehicle that that missing northern Kentucky couple was last seen in. And WKYT's Caitlin Sintner is at the scene near Connector Road in Paris Pike trying to figure out exactly what is going on with this new information. Good morning. Good morning, Rebecca. Police have been on scene for about five hours this morning, and it was just about a half an hour ago that they cleared the scene. KSP and Georgetown police got here around one o'clock this morning. Georgetown police had gotten a tip, a car matching that of the missing northern Kentucky couple. Robert Jones and Crystal Warner was just off the Georgetown exit. KSP says it does appear to match the couple's vehicle description. We're told the couple wasn't in the car and that canines also searched the 40 acre field that was behind the car here. Now we talked to the clerk at the Shell gas station behind the scene this morning. He said police had come in, showed him a picture of that couple and asked if he had seen them in the store. He said he hadn't seen them. We're still working to find more information out about this story. We were told from police to look out for a press release. So we're hoping that information comes soon so we can update you all. Live in Georgetown, Caitlin Setner, WKYT. 
All right, another story that uh, continues to develop while yep. we're on air this morning. Several areas of the state have been dealing with more than their fair share of rain this week. Unfortunately, the wet conditions will probably continue at least as we head toward the weekend. That repeat button has been set, it, it seems. Micah Harrison, our First Alert Weather Center, with more on the severe weather day. Yeah, and it's going to be once again here for today. We're already getting some thunderstorms sparking up down toward Hazard in Perry County. And not only that area, but also back towards southern portions of Indiana. This is heading our direction. And I've outlined that area that I do expect those storms to continue to pop up. I've shown this multiple times because this is exactly, if you have not seen this yet, look toward the screen. This is where we're going to be seeing storms spark up here in the next couple of hours. By 8, 9 a.m., you'll see more storms around the region. They're going to be heavy rainmakers and also a lot of lightning within these. Then we get toward late morning, 10, 11 a.m. That's when the bulk of the rain starts to slide on in here. So roughly noontime is when we see that severe weather threat really spark up, and that'll go into about 4 or 5 p.m. I'm going to show you where you can expect those at that time and when we can finally push this stuff on out of here. I'll have that coming up. Micah, thank you very much. As we said, we are following several very tough stories this morning. Police locally are trying to figure out what led to a deadly crash that happened this morning in Lexington. It happened shortly after 1 a.m. on Harrodsburg Road. Just inside the circle, a driver lost control and hit a tree. WKOT's Mike Byra is live with more on what police are saying. I'm at the scene where 24 year old Dalton Womack crashed his car this morning, leading to his death. Now I'm going to step out of the scene and, and kind of give you guys a great, uh, grand picture here. Now, if you look towards the left, uh, the bottom left of your screen, you can actually see the tire tracks from his SUV and the grass leading up to this tree. It's just unfortunate news this morning. Lexington police say Womack was heading outbound in the 2000 block of Harrodsburg Road near Springdale shortly after one this. Uh, before one this morning. They say that's when his silver SUV left the roadway and hit a tree. We're told Womack was the only person in the car and no other cars were involved in the accident. Police say the 24 year old was unresponsive when they arrived on scene. We're told Womack died at the hospital shortly after 1 a.m. Now, at this time, police don't know what caused Womack to lose control. They say there was no sign of alcohol at the scene. Now, the speed limit at this part of Harrodsburg Road is 45 miles per hour. There's also a curve. In the road where Wowak lost control of his car. Live in Lexington, Mike Byer, WKYT. All right, tragic situation there, and uh, certainly more facts to come in on that. And the owner of a Lexington candy shop says it's a lucky thing that nobody was injured when a truck came crashing through the front of the building there. It happened about 6 o'clock last night at Ruth Hunt Candies on Walton Avenue. The store had just closed when the truck came crashing in. No customers were inside. The owner was able to get out safely. The store will remain closed while contractors determine the extent of the damage and they'll be working on the building then. The owner says they do not know when they will be able to reopen. Quite a scene. Yeah. Well, let's check traffic and see what's happening out there on the roads this morning. Find your Friday morning. 640 now, 20 before 7. Here's a look at the region, and we have no reports of any trouble on the interstates. I-75, I-64 looking good. The Lexington Fayette Urban County Government's live camera now taking us out to Harrodsburg and Pasadena. And traffic is picking up, but we uh, still have uh, no reports of any troubles uh, in town right now. And we hope you will stay with us on WKYT this morning on this very busy day. A lot more coming up. Yeah, including this story. One Michigan couple used their wedding day to give back to the community. We'll tell you what they asked their guests to bring to their wedding. Here's a little clue when we return. And we have more storms in the forecast. We're going to be going over that when you can expect these storms to move on in and when you can expect them to finally move on out. I'm going to break it down for you hour by hour to help you plan out the rest of your day and your weekend coming up. We're back again with that first alert severe weather day. I'm meteorologist Micah Harris getting you updated on your morning. If you're over toward the east and southeast, that's where we have those rumbles of thunder going. But still, that outlined area is where you can expect those thunderstorms to continue to spark up. I want you to watch really closely. See these little blips here and there showing up Shelby, Spencer County, off towards, say, portions of the Bluegrass region. Those are blips that will continue to build and the intensity will continue to build. And that, those will turn into thunderstorms here in the next couple of hours. There is a slight chance of severe weather. And what that means for you is, and that's for everybody, by the way, what that means for you is watch out for a few severe cells to roll on through the region and a lot of heavy rain along with these. Not only damaging winds being 
our main threat, but also along with that, that's 1A. 1B will be flash flooding. There's no doubt about that. Our grounds are, our grounds are so, so soaked. So you just got to be watching out for that. 40 mile per hour wind gusts could top, topple over trees because of how soaked and saturated that ground is. It doesn't have to be a severe storm to actually do that damage. So just keep that in mind. Rounds of storms as we approach the day. Now, here's the deal. I would say about 8 a.m., 9 a.m., that's when those storms really start to spark up. 8 to about 10 a.m. is when you just have some thunderstorms, some, some lightning, some heavy downpours. Then 10, 11, 12. So 10 a.m. to noontime is when that bulk of the action slides in toward the northwest, slides in through the region, and from anywhere from 10 a.m. at the very earliest, at the very earliest, 10 a.m., to about 5 p.m. is when we start to see that severe weather threat. Much better day, though, as we head toward tomorrow. So those storms will calm down later on this evening. Heading out to the concert series there in Frankfurt, it looks much better later on this evening than it does here in the next few hours. Also kicking off this weekend there on Saturday, Lee and Rhymes in Mount Vernon. That's going to be a big concert. Another one to Quaker State 400. Don't forget about that. Big race up in Sparta. Weather looks fantastic. Not like the past couple of years. I remember, I think it was two years ago, it was a huge storm rolled through. It's nothing like that this year. It looks pretty dry. Mainly dry there on Sunday, but you can't rule out a small chance of rain. Let's talk about your seven day forecast and the breakdown of it. 89 degrees today. It's not about the temperatures, it's about those storms. And those storms roll on through, they'll barrel, barrel on through strong, potentially severe thunderstorms, damaging winds, flash flooding will be our main threats. Uh, the weekend looks good, guys, but the breakdown for today, if you are about to take off, here's, here's the breakdown for today. A crop from Louisville to the Bluegrass, Bluegrass down the Mountain Parkway. Those are areas that will start to see the storms first. And then from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., that is your best bet at strong to severe storms as they pass on through. Once you get after that, then the severe wood threat goes away, and we actually have a pretty decent evening and night in store. So it's going to be a loud and active day, that's for sure. If there's any upside, it's kept July pretty cool. Yeah, well, that's true. It's <laughs> that is true. Down. That <laughs> there's is been that. Positive. Somewhat. Appreciate the optimism. Yeah, in the, in the weekend, we'll, we'll right. hold on for that. Thank you, Micah. Well, weddings typically involve lots of gifts, of course, for the bride and groom, but one couple decided to ask for gifts for the classroom instead. The Michigan couple asked their guests to bring school supplies instead of traditional wedding gifts. They plan to donate them to a local elementary school. The bride used to work at that school and says she often saw teachers paying for supplies right out of their own pockets. All of our guests loved it. You know, everybody was saying that's the most meaningful wedding gift that they've ever bought. The guests were able to donate more than $600 in gift cards and thousands of dollars worth of school supplies. The couple hopes it inspires others to give back to their communities. Such a great thing when so many school districts have had trouble, you know, yeah. being able to get funds from the state right. to do that. Teachers having to pay on their own. All right, that's a good story, but we have a lot of tough news this morning, and all of our top stories are on the way. Coming up. Coming up, full coverage of the fatal sniper shootings that killed and injured several Dallas police officers. Scott Pelley joins us from the scene where a peaceful protest turned deadly. We'll hear from witnesses and the city's mayor. More real news coming up on CBS This Morning, next. Authorities in Texas have ended a lengthy standoff with a suspect possibly connected to last night's deadly police shootings in Dallas. Five officers were killed, another half dozen injured. Bill Bryant's at the alert desk with the latest. Well, a memorial group says the slaying of five police officers in Dallas in an attack blamed on snipers was the deadliest day in U.S. law enforcement history since the September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks. Four Dallas police officers and one Dallas area rapid transit officer were fatally shot last night. The gunfire happened during protests over this week's fatal police shootings of two black men. In Louisiana and in Minnesota. Six other officers were wounded in the Dallas attacks. And President Obama has addressed the nation early this morning. He says he is horrified over the shootings of police officers in Dallas and says there is no possible justification for the attacks. Obama spoke from Warsaw, Poland, where he is meeting with leaders of the European Union and attending a NATO summit. Obama says justice will be done, and he's asking all Americans to pray for the fallen officers and their families. He also says the nation should express its gratitude to those serving in law enforcement. The president said earlier there was no contradiction between supporting law enforcement and making certain biases in the justice system are rooted out. CBS This Morning will have the latest from Dallas coming up at the top of the hour. Scott Pelley will join CBS This Morning, the team there live from Dallas, in just a few minutes. 
Well, back here at home, the community will say goodbye to two Lexington first responders over the next couple of days. The funeral for Lexington Police Detective Philip Harrison will be today. Detective Harrison died Wednesday morning after losing his battle to cancer. His funeral starts at 2 this afternoon at Southland Christian Church on Richmond Road. Harrison was a member of the Lexington Police Department for nearly 20 years. The second first responder, Lexington firefighter Matt Logsdon, also lost his battle with cancer on Wednesday. Logsdon's visitation will be held Sunday from 1 until 9 at Highlands Funeral Home. This is in Louisville on Taylorsville Road. His funeral will also be at the uh, home there on Monday afternoon at 1 o'clock. Well, police have a warning for people in Madison County, and that is to make sure you lock your cars. Police say they have received several reports of car break-ins in neighborhoods throughout the county. In many of the cases, the cars were unlocked. Investigators tell us the man seen in this photograph is a suspected thief. They say he was caught on camera using a stolen ATM card earlier this week. Police say they are not sure how many car thefts the suspect may be responsible for. There's the picture. Uh, to avoid becoming a victim, they are reminding people to lock their car doors and avoid leaving valuable items in plain sight. It has been nearly 10 years since Comair Flight 5191 crashed near Bluegrass Airport, killing 49 people. To mark the anniversary, the Campbell House in Lexington is holding a blood drive today, just as it did to help the victims a decade ago. Jerry Van Der Meer was the general manager at the time of the crash and says he has vivid memories from 10 years ago. When you saw the families eventually coming into the hotel uh, and realizing the pain that they were going through, uh, it was uh, amazing to see the amount of comfort that not only our staff provided, but the community. Uh, I've never seen anything like that. The blood drive in honor of those victims and their families is today from 8.30 till 4.30 in the afternoon in the Mason Healy Ballroom. You can schedule an appointment through the Red Cross or walk-ins are welcome as well. According to J.P. Morgan Chase, middle-income households in the U.S. saved an average of about $480 on gasoline last year. The report also says gas prices fell by about 25 percent from 2014. Consumers pumped about $155 worth of those savings right back into gas station purchases. NASCAR rolls uh, back into the bluegrass this weekend. The sport's top drivers will go head-to-head -head in the Quaker State 400 at the Kentucky Motor Speedway Saturday night. Unlike years past, drivers will find a newly paved track at the Speedway. Up until now, the Speedway had been known for its bumps, but the new repaving project gives the track a smoother and faster surface. The Mega Millions jackpot has climbed to $540 million for tonight's drawing. It's the longest Mega Millions run without a winner. The jackpot has reached the third highest in the game's history. Lottery officials say ticket sales have doubled since last week alone. If you want to make sure you have a chance to pick up a win, be sure to pick up a ticket before tonight's drawing. As always, be sure to tune in to WKYT News at 11 and find those winning numbers immediately following the drawing. Well, it's now five minutes before the top of the hour. Let's get a check of weather with Micah. Yeah, and we're seeing those storms fire away, especially southern Indiana. Look at that one get going. Yeah, and all that's going to be riding a rail, if you will, right across Louisville area, off into the bluegrass, bluegrass off into the mountain parkway. Right through there is where that boundary is located, and those storms will just continue to fire away. And you can see that storm really getting going there. Southern Indiana, so next couple of hours, watch for these storms to really spark up and move on through. So I've outlined this area for you guys to show you where I expect these storms to really pop up the next couple of hours by 10 a.m. to about 5 p.m. That is your best bet for severe weather. You can see that really sparking across the bluegrass region. Southern zones is going to be a little bit later. It's going to be off into close to noontime, maybe a little bit after for some spots, and it passes on through and still another wave passing on through there around 5 p.m. So the breakdown for today, next couple of hours, watch these storms fire away. Once again, across the Louisville to bluegrass, bluegrass to Mountain Parkway, and then we start to see the bulk of the action, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. That's your severe weather threat as this barrels on through damaging winds and flash flooding being our main threat. All right, nobody's more up to date than you. We thank you for being with us on WKYT. CBS This Morning with the latest from Dallas is coming up. Have a great day.